Welcome back to C Sharp for Beginner Series. In this tutorial, I will discuss making decisions. I hope you have reviewed my earlier three tutorials, have installed C Sharp, are able to compile and run applications, and understand variables, data types, and the assignment statement. The objective of this lesson are to learn about the if else if statement, getting input from the user, and the coding style. I want to make a statement about uh, my teaching style. We are going to talk about programming constructs and you need to know and follow the syntax, the grammar. I did not learn English or C sharp programming by learning grammar first. So I will attempt to teach programming by examples. You probably should refer to the recommended text for this class to learn the finer syntax rules which you will eventually need to understand. The if statement. If you want to selectively execute part of a program, one way to do that is to use the if statement. The if statement executes a block of code only if the specified expression is true. If the value is false, then the if block is skipped and execution continues with the rest of the program. You can either have a single statement or a block of code within an if statement. The conditional expression must always be a boolean type or a bool type, must evaluate to either true or false. Some programming languages consider zero as false and non-zero as true, not C sharp. C sharp's boolean type has no numeric equivalence. Okay, now let's look at this example. These are two distinct if statements. However, since one and only one can be true, we can write it using the else clause. Also, what happens if A and B both were the same? How would these two programs behave? For the program that we have written, uh, the one that you saw on the previous slide, either A is greater than B or B is greater than A is what we are really considering. So, a better way to write that would be by using an else statement. If A greater than B, then this is going to happen, else this is going to happen. If you noticed, this does not address what happens if A exactly equals B. What would be printed in this example? You may want to download this program from my website, try running it and try to put a equals 5 and B equals 5 and see what the output you get from the program. Talking about the programming style, even though if you only have one statement following the if condition, you do not need to use braces, but I prefer using braces always. So in this case, if this is true, even though I have one line, I could have more lines, the, if I have more than one line, the braces are definitely going to be required. Else, under the else also, I only have one line, but more lines could be added. So I prefer this programming style, which is called the block if statement. Here is a better solution to the problem that we are considering. If A greater than B, then do this. If that's not true, look at the second possibility. Is A exactly B? Then do this. If not, what is going to be the case? Otherwise, the B is going to be greater than A. So I believe this pretty much covers all the cases. Whenever you are writing an if statement, make sure that you have covered all the cases that you would possibly come across in your application. We saw the list of relational operators earlier, you now we know how to use them, typically within an if statement. Most of the program you saw so far looks something like that. We have a class program, we have the main method, this is where the main method begins and this is where the main method ends and this is where the class ends. And you notice that our programs are getting bigger. So 
in the following slides I may try skipping the template part of it I will only be showing you the code here so if you want to try that code you need to write some sort of a class called program take the code put it under there and you will be able to test out that code now what if you want to read inputs from the user you want to be running your program based on some inputs provided by the user this is a template for reading the information from the user so before we read the information we want to prompt the user say enter your name and whatever the user enters we are going to read it using the read line whenever you have a string you read it using the read line and that's going to be assigned to the variable name next we are going to ask the user to enter age we are going to read that as a string and in this case since I am expecting that to be an integer I am going to use the parse method for the integer class to parse that string to a number so I got two inputs now name as a string and age as an integer and just to make sure I got the information right I am going to be printing that one out when you run this program this is what you're going to get it's going to say enter name you enter John Smith it says enter age you enter 31 after you enter that information it prints the information that it read okay so here is our if else program in which we need a and b in my previous example I showed you that the a and b were actually fixed in the program and to change them you need to go back and change your program here we have made the program or written the program such that a and b can be provided at runtime so in this case it's going to ask you to enter the first integer a enter the second integer that should be b you read a and b and uh, now based on the values that the user provided you're going to be making a decision and entering and getting the result is it's going to be either a greater than b or b greater than a if you provide a and b the same well then it's not going to print anything well here is the first bug in your program you will see many more of these this is going to be the output of the program if you entered a as 7 and b as 5 so one way to make a decision is by using an if statement another way to make a decision is by using the switch statement the switch statement is preferred whenever you can use it however the switch statement is limited the switch statement can make a decision only on one number only on one whole integer number so in this case we are going to ask the user to enter a number hopefully between uh, 1 and 12 we read the number as month as an integer and then we pass it on to the switch so depending on the value the number that the user entered for month it is going to go through all of these cases is month 1 or is it 2 or is it 3 and depending on what the value of month is it will print or spell out the name of that month for you if you entered anything other than 1 through 12 it is going to go under the default clause and say that the number that you entered is an invalid month number oh one more thing about the switch statement now which one would you prefer between a case and a switch case generally is simpler to read and case is also faster but the case statement the switch case statement is limited a note about the coding style especially the indentation practices indentation you may have noticed that certain statements were indented in the examples that I showed you earlier even though C sharp compiler does not care where you place your statements relative to each other indenting the code helps making the code more readable it turns out that when programming you will spend 90% of your time reading the code and only 10% of the time writing new code so you should try to make your code readable unless of course you are worried about your job security basically you indent one level after each opening brace and uh, go back one level after the closing brace so that's the basic style that you should follow in fact 
for most part if you're going to be using Visual Studio it takes care of the indentation for you but sometimes it doesn't do that if you have an error or a syntax error in your statement okay so we learned about the if statement and the switch case statement for making decisions in your program we also learned about how you read user input at the DOS prompt or the command prompt next we will learn about the for loops and the do while loop thank you